because we're competing with Will Smith posters. And if your poster is up next to like a 30 million US dollar film, you better find a way to make yours look expensive. And it was also around that time when Barcode came out as well. Yes. So it was like this big boom of like, Certainly. this industry is like yeah. properly starting now. Yeah. And you're like right there. I think that is part of what makes South African filmmakers very, very like dangerous on the international platform is the fact that we have so many restrictions because of we have limited budget. Hi, I'm Jakob. And I'm Mark. And welcome back to Department Spotlight. No, wait, we rebranded. Hi, I'm Jakob. And I'm Mark. And welcome back to On The Real. Yes, we rebranded, so that's what we're calling it now. I just forgot in the other intro, but that's what we're doing. Today, we are going to be talking to the extremely talented and prolific <laughs> Mornay de Toy. <laughs> Hi, Monet. Hi, how's it? Yeah. Good, good. Um, so, Monet has directed a bunch of South African films, a lot of Afrikaans content, recently more English stuff as well. Um, so, we're really excited to talk to you just about that entire journey, um, you know, everything, how do you get a movie made, um, what's it like when you did your first thing, and I think the most important question that I have for you, I'm just going to start with that, right? If I've got 24 tomatoes, right? And I go to the all gold factory and steal 12. <laughs> How many do I have left? Wow, it, it's got to be something between <laughs> 37 and 35. So it's got to be 36. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that's another reason I'm really excited to have you on. That was like, I don't want to make you feel old or anything. But like when I was like 13, 14 ish, oh, wow. that ad was like the thing. Um, in South Africa, which was <laughs> an all gold, which is a tomato sauce company. I really learned how to do it because of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm really excited. I, I was like fanboying over here. I was like, oh, no way, is it that guy? You, you've got no idea how many drinks that commercial got me when I was a student. Because I was like, I was like first year film school student and like, going out to Hatfield, like people recognize me and like, dude, say it for me. And I'm like, oh, it's good. Everything in life is an exchange, right? So what's it going to be? <laughs> you That's know? Awesome. So yeah, yeah. That, awesome. was a, that was a good intro into, uh, yeah, commercials. Yeah. 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 Amazing. No, yeah. I mean, I'm glad you guys know it. <laughs> no, <of laughs> I course. guess most people do. Yeah, didn't yeah. actually know it was you until I was looking on your Instagram. And then, then when you turned 36. Oh, yeah. And I was like, Shit. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> so that commercial was very much like God sent to me because so I had enough money to go to first year in film school because I yeah paid for my own studies, lived abroad in England for three years, came back for with enough money to pay for first year. In my first year at film school, got that commercial, first audition I ever went to. Whoa. And then it gave me like an insight into the other like real Film sets, mm -hmm. right? So I was like a sponge observing all this, like, you know, all the, the way sets are run. And, and yeah, That's I took amazing. that and applied it to my short films or whatever. <laughs> and one commercial led to another and another. So, like, yeah, very amazing. grateful for Benny. Benny is the character in the Oh, the character, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> amazing, yeah. yeah. That's, that's awesome. And then that's... I put, that commercial put me through film school. So, yeah, wow. that was cool. Recently, we did 17 years later, Oh yeah, we did a, a, another commercial. So, oh, I, didn't, I missed it. So like it. last yeah. year, we shot really? it. We shot it last year. Yeah, that's. Crazy. And I haven't seen it until I saw it two weeks ago. Everyone has seen it. I haven't seen it. So <laughs> I was in the hotel room and then I was like, ah, yes, <laughs> there the, it is. Yeah, the the Leonardo DiCaprio meme. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Amazing. Okay. I really want to see that. I haven't seen. I mean, it's all streaming now, so I guess I haven't really seen the ad. Yeah, yeah. All that much. But I'm, I'm keen. I'm going to go track it down. Well, <laughs> let me know what you think. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Okay, so let's get into like, I mean, you said that thing got you into uh, or paid for your film school, basically. Yeah. How did you, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you made some short films. How did you transition from film school to like professional filmmaker? So, yeah, I was a bit of a hustler, like as a student, you know, so mm -hmm. I ended up Start, I started working as a filmmaker, kind of doing corporate films and things like that in my okay. third year, I guess, around there. Okay. 
Uh, and in my, yeah, I, I started like through that commercial, a lot of friends that I, I got calls from people from that we studied at after I was at the UT, oh, Swan okay. University of Technology. And I obviously like, you yeah, know, went to some like, you know, uh, corporate functions that the university sent us on, whatever, met with people and then, oh, we're studying at Avda, do you want to act in our shorts? So like one thing led to another, I ended up like expanding my network quite early, like as a student and acting in short films from like other film schools. Okay. And by the time I was finished with film school, I had already, you know, like uh, known a few people and producers and started working with like uh, the film factory with Donnie Bester, doing like a lot of corporates and music videos and things yeah, like yeah. that. And yeah, I guess that's the long and the short of it, like working on, working, just being willing to work on anything. Awesome. I guess that's the, yeah, like, yeah. I always tell the young guys, like, don't, yeah, whatever it is, just be on a set. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Did you always want to be a director um, or because obviously you did the acting thing for, yeah. for a while? You yeah. still do acting? A little bit, every now and then. I always wanted to be a filmmaker and a director. Okay. Acting was kind of, didn't know I had the talent and then like <laughs> got asked to go to an audition and that yeah. was the old girl thing. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool, I can do this and I can make money paying for, for studies, so why not? And that kind of put me in some other films and whatever, but mm. it's always been like directing. Uh, since I saw that movie, uh, uh, yeah, Robert Zemeck has changed my life. Same. Yeah, Same. there we go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's always been the, like, I, I discovered filmmaking or the art of movies when I saw Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Oh, nice. Yeah, my grandfather took me to watch that. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, <laughs> and that was like, that was like, I think 1989 or 88 or something. Yeah. And I'm giving my age away now. <laughs> well, you you already, how you already, you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so watching Who Framed Roger Rabbit, animation with live action, mm. and like my mind just blew. Like, yeah. I was like walking out of there going, okay, little kid, nine years old, I don't know how old I was. Like, uh, okay, movies can be like magical. Literally, and yeah. somebody has to make it, right? Yeah. And I had a friend to Skulls, who's Andre Skulls' uh, son. Mm -hmm. We were friends from preschool. Okay. And his dad was, he produced all Leon Schuster's movies, you know, yeah. Andre Skulls. Um, and over the years, like, it's always been this thing, you know, like, Christy's dad, I want to do what he, yeah, you know, the yeah. industry that he does, that thing that he does, yeah. Cool. So that's that's the, very cool. Yeah. Yeah. So then, um, and you guys, I mean, like, <laughs> I, I, oh, sorry, I know it's not, <laughs> no, no, it's good. <laughs> It'll just be. Conversation is better than just like a sit down interview. Yeah. Um, for me, it was Blade Runner. Ah. <laughs> um, I watched it when I was like way too young to understand it. Yeah. Cause like I'd always watched movies before and it would be like, you know, Jurassic Park and stuff, which is an, an incredible film. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is what the, these things are. Like big things that are like not like yeah. how we experience things. Yeah. And then Blade Runner is, is kind of like a little bit of both. It's like yeah. big, but it's like about like what humans are. And I was yeah. like way too young to understand. <laughs> and I was like, what is going on? What is this thing? Did not get it. This all. world that's yeah. unlike your world. Yeah. And then... Yeah, it's, it's just the one that I've been keep on coming back to, and then you just like learn something new from it every time. So I think it's like a good, it like mm. led me into other films, you know, yeah. And, and yeah, discovering like, oh, it's not just sort of big stuff, it's like, yeah, this is such a such a diverse, it's, yeah, you know, yeah. And, like international cinema, and like, yeah, it's like, a, it's like it was like a gateway drug, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. There. And your take on the remake, just I loved it, okay, yeah. 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 It's, yeah, yeah. News, you right. suddenly meet people who were a fan of the, you know, the original, and then not a fan of the remake. Like everyone's a fan of the remake. Well, yeah. everyone I've met. Yeah, no, I mean that was yeah. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean Roger Deakins shot it, the, the remake. Yeah, yeah. Did it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's no, like, it had everything it needed. Yeah, it loyal to the following. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which yeah, I think is very important. Which is something that a lot of people miss with remakes. Especially all the yeah, they Disney miss that. Remakes. Uh, yeah. yeah, the loyalty yeah. part. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm quite excited to see Top Gun 
because it looks like they've got all the same ingredients, but in a fresh way. Like, yeah. 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 I, I'm, I'm a little bit more skeptical about that. Um, okay. I don't know. I feel like the Tom Cruise movies have sort of become a little bit stagnant. Yeah, so I'm worried that he's like, because he's producing all yeah, of them as well. Yeah. So I'm worried that he's like too, um, I don't know, want, wanting to make be too mainstream yeah. with it. Updating to, it. To commercial. It doesn't yeah. need any advertising, actually. Yeah. You know, exactly. It just needs. But I mean, yeah. it could be amazing. I don't, I, yeah. <laughs> the trailer looks good. It does. Gave me goosebumps. Yeah. First yeah. picture was 2011. 2011. Yeah. And that was, was uh, with, with Macy, Macy right? Yeah. yeah. I remember seeing with Macy as a like, 15 year old. Yeah. <laughs> and just being like, oh, cool. Afrikaans movies are like yeah. picking up. Um, yeah. Uh, because, I mean, it was sort of in that time, right? Yeah. From like 2009-ish to 2013, 14, yeah. where there was like tons of Afrikaans movies. movies where before, you know, it was like not that much or it wasn't very good. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, um, you know, they just started like popping off like That's a lot so of them. That's cool, yeah. yeah, and to be part of that kind of transition phase because I think there was a lot of kind of stigma around Afrikaans mm -hmm. movies uh, or... Not stigma, but like... I, I, yeah. yeah, exactly. There was like this that's, perception that's, that it's not very good or... Or only drama. You or, know, like yeah, exactly. Philosophy yeah. and like, mm. you know... But, uh, and also like all of the good ones were very old. Yes. You know, it was yes. like before that time period, it yeah. was like you have to watch Paul Yass from like exactly, 1994. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It was two different chlorophyll, yeah. Exactly, like, yeah. Which were all great movies. I mean, I remember doing a metric like study thing on two different chlorophyll, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, very influential movies, like, yeah. but, like, uh, exactly that, like, yeah. oh, Afrikaans movies can also be fun and comedies. And exactly. Like, yeah. And it was also around that time when Bakhut came out as well. Yes. So, it was, like, this big boom of, like, That's this amazing. industry is, like, yeah. properly starting now. Yeah. And you're, like, right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. With that was like Donnie Bested as well, yeah. producing a lot Bakhut of them. was my first job out of film school. I was, oh, wow. Lucia Mayer phoned me up. They, they need an first AD they're already like four days into production or something like that and I was like I'm free because I'm kind of done with film school now you know awesome. and uh, and yeah they uh, like I mean start as a first AD yeah that's <laughs> right but it that's was very, very impressive very guerrilla style obviously very small budget and mm. I had already had a relationship with Lucia mm. Marion a little bit with Tony Pesher at the time so I mean it was a and obviously got to, like, met Hank Pretorius on Bakhat 1 for the first time. We ended up becoming friends and yeah. later, like, were housemates uh, a few years oh, after cool. that and whatever. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, Bakhat was kind of the establishment of my relationship with yeah. Film Factory. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. But it also, I feel like that Film Factory specifically as well, just, um, it. I mean, you say the budget wasn't very big, but it, it looked big budget. You know, like yeah. they had the, the whole school involved in Bakhat. Yeah. It looked like, oh, this is like a real proper production. Yeah. Um, we were spending all the time and resources necessary to do it, even though it was on a low budget. Yeah, that's, I think, our biggest advantage as filmmakers in South Africa is the fact that we have such a tall, like, order in terms of, like, competition. Yeah. Because we're competing with Will Smith posters and, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like, big budget films mm -hmm. and if your poster is up next to like a 30 million US dollar film you better find a way to make yours look expensive mm -hmm. but you know so mm -hmm. I think that's what our, our most underrated skill is is to be able to like sell mm -hmm. our world as bigger yeah yeah, yeah. art department uh, these days with VFX and all that stuff it's all possible uh, and we've got some really good VFX in South Africa. Yeah. And, and it's like you don't even artists. know. Yeah. 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 And they'll work on commercials or, you know. Exactly. Like yeah. Work in agency. Uh, yeah. I guess like we, the only thing stopping us is like the perception. Yeah. Uh, from, from, but we, I mean, South African films are doing amazing abroad. Uh, yeah. It's like, yeah, people are becoming. Yeah, I mean, I was I've been to the Cannes Film Festival a couple of times, and every time I walk through the mart, there's also always like a Afrikaans, but like I saw semi suits was oh, on wow. there once, and Vushuk okay. Fro um, or whatever. It was like, but it's obviously in in English. The title was like oh. Pharmaceutics uh, Woman <laughs> yeah. or something. <laughs> Pharmaceutics Wife. Yeah, it was like it was all these weird stuff, but it's like yeah. called me. You talk to the the sales agents, yeah. just like oh, cool, and then. 
But so yeah, no, it's definitely it's a cool like like considering where we've come from, mm. like being like this little like and only in like ten years, well, twelve ish yeah. years, you know, like yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a big... definitely come a long way, and yeah. I mean, looking at what the guys are doing, the the, the guys coming up, uh, we can really be proud of how like the country has like mm. found its confidence, you know, in the form, in the art form, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, so okay, let's talk about with Macy then. Um, how, how, just how? <laughs> like, obviously, <laughs> we know you you knew the people, and then so you were you was it because you were the AD. Uh, and then you like pitched an idea or how? Okay. Yeah. So we worked, uh, I, at the time had been doing a lot of music, directing music videos okay. uh, for Film Factory and Corpus, like I said. And uh, Samuel Ferrara, the writer of mm. With Macy, him and Hank were, Hank was the, Hank Pretorius was the script supervisor mm -hmm. on the script. And Hank uh, pitched, well, uh, presented me with the script and he said like if I'm interested read it and let me know and then they can arrange for me to pitch um, yeah, to be director on the project and uh, I read the script and it was hilarious I just yeah. related to you know like yeah. watching a lot of John Hughes movies as a kid like high school films mm. not necessarily uh, just you know comedy high school films but like Ferris Bueller's Day Off was a yeah. big film for me growing up and uh I just, it just had this like uh, appeal to me, like a tween comedy mm -hmm. and like a nice challenge because it's girls, you know, <laughs> yeah. leading characters. So that was like a yeah pitch that I worked really hard on and ended up uh, winning the pitch and you know, yeah. got the opportunity and like took it with both hands. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, it was a big like break for me in a way to put a like director stamp on a on a project like yeah. a debut film yeah and still very proud of the film i think we achieved a lot with a very small budget yeah. i i mean like i said i was it's, like one of my really first sort of like i was because i mean I, obviously with buck Hut and then yeah. you, know, you watch the american stuff and then you like come back to the african yeah. thing yeah. it's like oh yeah what's this and then yeah. um yeah no it was very good and budgeting for that i mean you don't have to say how much money you guys spent on it but um where where did you guys sort of find the funds and all that so um, that's maybe a question for, for Donnie Bester, but uh, my understanding is that a big part of the budget was in both CakeNet Films mm -hmm. and some private investors and uh, a little bit of product placement. That's, okay. that's how the model was put together in, in my understanding. Okay. And obviously there's some of the, I, I don't know, maybe it's a question that Donnie will, uh, that's right. my place to. No, 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 yeah. fair enough. I mean, I mean, the reason we're asking is yeah. obviously, you know, we haven't made any features yet and we're always yeah. like, where do they get the money? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> so, and that's something I'm also still working on, you know, like <laughs> trying to figure out new ways of getting finance mm. for films because like the world is becoming so much smaller and like learning how to like tap into other resources you know, like, I guess the answer is get a good producer <laughs> get a good producer or become a good producer by like <laughs> learning how to network uh, it's yeah it's like sometimes I find it to be like a bit of a rock and a hard place to because you, you you want to build an international network I'm talking about getting finance abroad yeah. like it's expensive to travel right so like you have to I keep learning I keep learning and I guess yeah. we should always always keep, keep learning yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, just find the best way to do it and then yeah. just, just do it Luckily, like I think what's great about um, multi-choice is the fact that they really invest in local filmmakers and creating content that are, you know that's mm. locally produced. Now with Netflix being more open for African content and content produced in Africa, I mean, mm. I see it as a healthy competition. Not I don't know if they consider it a competition at all, but like for filmmakers, it's like cool. We have another option, you know. Like, yeah. It's, which which yeah. is a good thing as well because um, I mean it is sort of like you can only go to like Mnet, CakeNet, or like Mzanzi. It feels like those are the big ones yeah. that you can pitch to right yeah. now. Um, and those are all multi-choice. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's sort of like there's a monopoly, and then Netflix comes in. And it's like okay, well we're gonna put like you know what it was a million dollars into students. Uh, recently they said they just can give bursaries yeah. which is like great that's yeah. awesome we need more of that and then you know netflix is making stuff like blood and water yeah. and um queen sono and yeah. all that stuff so 
Yeah, yeah it's it, uh, competition. I think is always yeah, it's good. good. Uh, I mean, like uh, even just looking at what I mean, Multijoss has this like talent factory thing going. Yeah. The amount of uh, young talented individuals that they get onto mm-hmm. movie sets and uh, drama sets, it's it's. it's it's a lot. I, I did a promo recently for for um, multi choice showcase, and it's like thousands of young the, what they've put out. Yeah. You know, yeah, that yeah, people yeah. who are working in the industry. Yeah. And awesome. what Skynet is doing with the Silver Scar and Fears, it's like really giving people opportunity to like mm. practice their craft and like make content. That yeah. We we recently last year we worked on a Silver Scar and Fears movie. We edited it and everything, yeah. uh, and, and it's premiering like. At this one coming in March. Oh, cool! So, um, is this what's it called? Benny I Bingo. Think you, Benny yes. Bingo, yeah. uh, yes. Did you tell me about it? I think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I saw the post actually, Benny yeah. Bingo. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so, and you guys did the post on the project. Yeah. Or, uh, well, the editing and the grading. Okay. And then we did was we would yeah mark okay. descriptive and yeah. did yeah. Cool. So that's what we did on that. Um, cool. We've we've pitched a couple. We haven't gotten the well, chance yet. Yeah. Yet. Yet. yet we'll Not see. yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're doing some other things, like literally tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we should talk about it. Um, anyway. Cool. <laughs> but we're getting in there with with things. The uh, consistency of like just keep pushing and like mm. pitching projects and having something in development is. Yeah. You know, I think that's the kind of. So I guess the thing is, you just like you said, just keep doing things until and pitching and until something happens. Yeah, and I mean that's something that's so like uh, it's a skill, right? And mm. to like win over a room and to to like pitch a project, a one liner, a log line, a, you know, it, the elevator pitch is called the elevator pitch for a reason. It's like yeah. you win somebody over in like in a few thirty seconds, seconds yeah. or ten seconds or yeah. So. I think it's a skill, like a couple of years ago, like, I don't know, this was maybe like 2019 or 2020, no, 2018 or 19. Yeah. At the Silver Scar and Fears, they had this like pitch uh, kind of, not a workshop, it was like um, they uh, opened up the floor for people to pitch oh, ideas really? cool. for, for a series or a film. Uh, oh, cool. And uh, there was like, you had to draw a number and then they call your number and then you go to the front, you get like a minute. You cool. pitch your idea, and and I was like, I'm totally gonna pitch something just yeah. to like, it, it, just to like get this. This was a like a bigger crowd, right? Yeah. So like, obviously the multi choice executives were sitting there, and I have relationships with, you know, some of them. But like to me, it was like an opportunity to just like work that muscle, mm. and kind of see if I can win over the room, you know. Mm. Um, and a lot of very established filmmakers were pitching ideas. And I was like, that's so cool. Like, yeah. everyone's got that, like, understanding. And, like, this is, a, this is a part of your skill, just making movies and telling stories. That's one part. Yeah. The other part is getting that, <laughs> like, like, golden signature, you know, yeah, on yeah. your project. Like selling you know? your idea, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you, you can have amazing ideas in your drawer, if they're not being made, they're just in a drawer, you know, <laughs> like, Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. I, uh, I also did something similar to that uh, called The Pitch. Oh, um, where? But, well, at Cannes in 2017, oh, cool. yeah. Nice. I I entered a, just a, one of the student films. We just put it in the, like, the short film corner. Okay. Which obviously, it's not going to win anything. It was a student film. Put it on there and then you but get it was access. Accepted. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. Cool. So they accepted it in there, and I mean, they don't play the movie like in a cinema. It's just sort of like on a computer, and then people can go watch it. Sure. Yeah. But they give you like access to the second week of the festival, yeah. so you can like walk around everywhere. You can get tickets to like watch the movies and everything. Cool. Cool. And then as part of that, there was like an email that came through that you can like enter a pitch, and okay. then you can like do a pitch there, and then maybe get funding. Okay. And I actually pitched Mala Mila. Because oh. I was because it was, was before, before you made it before we filmed it, yeah. Oh, and I cool. was like, maybe I can get a little bit of funding to make the short. Oh yeah. Because uh, obviously, it, after they don't give you <laughs> any yes. money. Sure. Um, and then, so I did the pitch. I didn't win. <laughs> okay. But um, that was my first IMDb credit. <laughs> Amazing. And how did the pitch feel? Like it was very weird. I practiced it for so long, and then it was just like over. And I was like. Oh. <laughs> so was it in front of a crowd? There was a small crowd, but it was also just people waiting to pitch, okay. and then they film you, Okay. and then um, that's it. So that, there's no, like, important people, yeah. except obviously the people who work there, Yeah. Um, who who was watching me and whatever, and they were counting yeah. you down, because if you're, like, a 
a second over 45, they cut the camera. Okay. So they're like so, five seconds before they do the thing. Yo. Um, and you find yourself, they're <laughs> trying to talk like a sedate, okay, and, is, and then he dies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, that, that, that was my experience also with the pitch thing. And okay. I was like, I, I, I knew about it for like two or three months before. Okay. So I was just like practicing it, honing it down, yeah. practicing on people. That's that, so isn't that important? To like practice yes. uh, with your friends and your family, like exactly because it's yeah. very different if it's you and then someone yeah. else. Because yeah. it's like when you're with someone else, you're trying to remember. And yeah, you're stiff, and then and you're in a different frame of mind, or exactly, like whatever. Yeah. You may be tired. You maybe like just came back from the gym, whatever. But like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, that's very. I, I'm very. It's very cool that uh, Silver Skyrim is doing that as well. That's such a big part of the skill. That you, yeah, or the process. Yeah, getting a project off the ground. I was saying earlier, like. It needs to, like, just before we were running, like, yeah, I have to get it off the ground. And once it's off the ground, it feels like a miracle. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. like, when the camera starts to roll and, like, yeah. cool, okay, <laughs> pinching myself here. Yeah. I want to talk about the Silver Skyrim Fierce a little bit more. You've done how many others? Like, Silver Skyrim Silver shorts. Silver Skyrim shorts. No, I think I've done, I did Princess, I did Storm, I did Combi Camille Pert and a camcorder. Three. Three, I okay. I think it's three, yeah. So, Combi, Camille uh, Pert, and a camcorder is the yeah. I saw when I was at, at Silver Skyrim the first time. Oh, okay. In 2017, I think. Okay, yeah. Uh, um, no, yeah. 2018. 2018, 2018 yeah. yeah. Because Malamira was also showing there just as part of the after, yeah. you know, thing. So, I got the the access to the Oh, thing. cool. So, I watched that. It was really funny. Cool, yeah. That um, was like... Just, just... Briefly, um, what sort of that process? How do you? you obviously, you, you write your little three hundred word summary, and then they they pick it, and then you know they give you, I guess, the funding. How do you how do you manage that whole thing? From like getting it approved to like making yeah, the film, exactly. They've got a really good like uh, very efficient system going uh, through a company, Idea Candy, who mm -hmm. does most of the the management of the projects and yeah, from pitch to to like uh, to screening basically. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I mean, I guess it's a it's it's really good in the sense that it because you're dealing with I think a lot of young filmmakers who enter things. So there's no like you have to have done so much experience in the industry to be able to enter. Anyone can enter. And I think for that reason, they have a very solid system of like kind of almost guidance through all the milestones that you have to achieve, you know, like first offline viewing and, you know, like getting your budget approved and having supervisors on set to make sure that you're not spending too much money on, on catering and no money or lenses and no money on food yeah. or whatever, you know. So um, the process of like, yeah, it's, 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 it's the same as any other process. Not oh, a lot okay. of time. So, uh, so it sort of like translates well into like the feature space. It's yeah. sort of a similar process. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I think what's uh, you obviously have a little bit more time than you would have with a feature. You're working so the the but like the, there's never enough budget. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter if they give you a million to make a twenty minute short. There still won't be enough. <laughs> But uh, it's uh, yeah, it's a very good replication of of the process of making a feature film, and I and I think uh, yeah, the the biggest thing to learn in that process of making shorts is is like yeah, the, making sure that you're selecting people mm. that you can believe in, people who are who can carry your project for you. And, you know, it's mm. like I, something I learned later in my career is like it's maybe also a skill is, is that, you know, like uh, the better and stronger the team and head of departments that are surrounding me with this little vision, mm. uh, the, you know, the easier it is because then you're sharing the, the weight, okay. the load. Yeah. So, I mean. The collaboration. Yeah, yeah. And I think and I hope that most filmmakers who work on these Silver Scaram shorts learn that. And I'm sure they do. I mean. Mm. You, there's nothing worse than being let down by somebody in a head of department that, uh, yeah. So, yeah. so uh, over time you obviously learn who you want to work with, and, but uh, yeah, time, I've yeah. learned that, yeah, the skill of communicating your ideas, but not just that, inspiring creativity in others. That's, that's what I'm, I guess, over the last seven years of like being, uh, like learning the most of and, and tapping into, you know. Yeah. Uh, because like you've got access to all these individuals who are all creatives and 
you know, like, it'll be foolish to go, this is my idea, my way, you know, like, <laughs> Uh, I find it actually so much, like, so liberating to see people flourish creatively, but within a framework, you know, mm -hmm. like, that's actually, like, uh, gives me quite a kick. And I can't believe I didn't tap into that earlier in my career, but, like, that's yeah. like the filmmaker ego, young filmmaker <laughs> ego I had, I don't know. But That's very good advice. I don't know. It's not advice, is it? Uh, you didn't I mean, ask for it, so please, no, no, no. it's not advice. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think there's a lesson to be learned. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the people don't just pick your friends because they're available always. Obviously, if you have no choice, then that's great. Yeah. But if if somebody lets you down, you know, try to not work with them again. Yeah. So I think that is. There's or still if a they let you there, down, yeah. to like find a way to have a dialogue and figure out what it was and mm. get stronger through that. Mm. Yeah. With, no, with that's that cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank that you. That was very, very interesting, very insightful. Yeah, really, you. I mean, I had learned so much from that. Oh, well, I learned from you guys. Oh. I mean, this is what you guys are doing. This is super cool. I mean, yeah, I'm inspired. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how true, true that is, but thank you. <laughs> no, like you guys have, look at this edit suite. You guys are like your movie posters up. And that Back to the Future poster, you better lock your doors because I'm like... <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. So that's it for this conversation. I hope you liked it. And yeah, big thanks to Monet for all of these valuable insights and tidbits of information that you can take forth into your filmmaking career. Uh, if you liked it, leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Leave a question down below and maybe you can ask Monet a question and we can try and get back to you. Who knows? We'll see. Ask a question. <laughs> Until next time, go out there, stay safe. And make your movie!